page. So I have the honor of introducing our lightning talk presenters. The the lightning talks are going to be between five to seven minutes, so quite fast with the three minute Q&A. And so our first presenters are, um, the title is Health Professions, Learners, and Gen AI, Current Use and Implications for Practice by Ed Spur and Emily Harris. So thank you all. Take it away. Hi, thank you. I'm going to share our screen and then I will let Ed take us away. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so as Emily just said, uh, she and I will pre be presenting our joint work on behalf of both ourselves and our co-authors. Uh, Emily is dental and cancer information librarian, I think, over at Augusta University. And I am clinical information librarian over at the Augusta University, University of Georgia Medical Partnership here in Athens, Georgia. And the two of us work with learners at different stages of their careers um, that are working in the health professions. And that was the main re thing that really drove this project is trying to get a sense of specifically how this particular audience uses uh, these applications. So the main rationale of this is when we took a look at a lot of the published research about this, a lot of it really focuses in this notion of what might happen in the future, not so much what's going on right now. And even when folks are talking about the here and now, many times what they're talking about is attitudes uh, towards generative AI by both faculty and students. And where actual use data is presented, a lot of times that's in proprietary reports by different sorts of organizations. So it's not necessarily part of the general literature. So we really wanted to get a better sense of how health profession students are using these tools and also maybe a more granular sense than's presented into the forums. So being librarians, we decided that maybe a survey would be a good thing. And indeed, we do think that a survey is probably the best way to try to get an overall view of this question. So we put together a short survey, um, fairly granular survey, but still small enough to not be too much of a responder burden to try to gauge the current usage of generative AI applications like ChatGPT, but also other ones by this population. We worked with our Office of uh, Institutional Effectiveness, as well as our Institute Institutional Review Board um, to uh, color within the lines, but also make sure uh, that we didn't uh, spam everybody in the institution. So we came up with 1,600 randomly selected health profession students at both Augusta University as well as the medical school over here at the partnership. And we sent those folks a link to the survey in Qualtrics and also a link uh, to the um, informed consent and information about the study. We also, uh, for good measure, posted some flyers with that same information around the campus. So let's look at the results that we got from the survey. So we got 101 responses from a healthy mix of nursing, medical, dental, allied health students, and then other makes up other biomedical programs in our graduate school. And of those respondents, 70% reported using a generative AI application. And for the most part, they are using ChatGPT specifically. There were a few other applications used, but um, largely ChatGPT. Responses show that some students um, are using these resources for personal work, um, but primarily they're using it at least somewhat for academic. You can see in our pie chart here, there's a good mix um, of personal and academic use. And then they're using these applications quite frequently. Um, a few just try them once or twice and don't currently use them, but the large majority use them at least once a month or more. But in addition to understanding which of these applications were being used, we also want to find out what tasks they're being used for. Um, so while we certainly saw some usage for task-based prompts, like generating practice questions or annotating a diagram, the data shows that the majority of students are using these resources for information retrieval. That's things like literature searching, generating summaries of topics, or getting more information about a particular disease or diagnostic test. And some of these information retrieval tasks align with the skills that um, medical librarians, we, are, we aim to teach our medical learners and are an even further extension um, of the use of quick access, point of care tools, resources, such as up to date that libraries subscribe to. 
So the primary limitation of this study is we didn't really get a lot of response. We only got 6% of the folks uh, that we sent invitations to, and actually the response rate from invitations is a little bit lower than that because we did have a couple of folks respond via those flyers that we sent out. So because of that, we're not quite sure just how representative these results are. As Emily just pointed out, we got back a lot of folks saying they use these applications, but maybe those were just folks that were really excited about Gen AI, Gen AI and that's why they responded to the survey. And we do understand that even though we think surveys are a good measure of this kind of thing, that surveys are still kind of a blunt instrument. But the big implication is that students are using ChatGPT to look things up. And especially in the health professions context, at health professions libraries, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money at these kind of point of care resources or these kind of summative resources that kind of do the same thing. So it does raise the question of, you know, what exactly are we going to all this trouble for if you could just use something like up to date to get the same answer? Also, if they're, these students are spending so much time using ChatGPT, are they ever going to learn to use those conventional resources, especially resources that may have more detailed information to give them as they go forward in their careers? But also this notion of hallucinations or confabulations is an interesting one. I mean, we know from prior research that this happens all the time that these generative, generative AI applications make stuff up, but our students don't really seem to be aware of that fact. Here's uh, Emily's contact information. Here's my contact information. And importantly, here's also the project page where I think right now we have the survey instrument posted. And as we continue to sort of uh, delve into our information uh, and write up our uh, hopeful pre uh, publication going forward, that information will be on this project page as well. And here are other authors that could not join us today. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ed and Emily. So we have just like three minutes if anyone wants to ask any questions. This is fascinating to see. I have a question. Uh, have you, uh, have some of the people who have worked on this, have they used chat, if it is chat GPT that's being helpful instead of um, uh, using up to date. Have you tried comparing what Chat GPT can do and what up to date have, would have offered instead? Not as much, Marsha. Uh, that's kind of outside of the scope of this particular project. I think there are some publications that have come out relatively recently that sort of try to get at that question in terms of how well a uh, chat GPT and other generative AI applications work specifically in biomedical education queries. Um, but yeah, no, that's a really good question. Thanks. Are there any other questions you can, um, oh, there's a question that came in. Are educators cautioning students' use of AI due to inconsistencies, especially in health medical queries? How are these implications being addressed? Have you heard anything, Emily? Yeah, um, so I was gonna say, I'm on a couple curriculum committees and, and I hear about this, but it's still very, um, just kind of up to the professor. But I think that um, I, when I'm giving library instruction at the beginning of the semester or whenever, I've started giving a snippet about AI. So I am talking about what platforms exist, but also what pitfalls to look out for and things like that. So I am definitely addressing the implications in my own teaching. And there's lots of um, things being said about it, you know, in curriculum planning in general. Thank you. I think we are maybe 30 seconds from time. So um, thank you again, Ed and Emily, for your presentation. And remember, you can always um, look back at uh, our shared notes for LilyCon. Um, so thank you again, both of you.